service this morning with hymn number 98, found in the hymnal. You all rise. Rise as you are able. of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, and forgive us. So that we may be in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And in peace let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer hither worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us. 
us, gracious Lord. taken from Joshua chapter 5. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month on the plains of Jericho. On the day of the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Cana that year. Let us read responsibly Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to the Lord and keeps them and keeps the while I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My emotions dry up as the heat of the sun. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sins. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you many ways that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. The second lesson is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. 
we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he was made him he made him to be sinned to excuse me. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteous of God. Here is the lessons for today. and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of my property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to eat and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now when his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and, that all, and all that is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because of this brother of yours was dead and has now come to life. He was lost and is now in town. The Gospel of about the children's sermon for a few minutes and we heard through the scripture that the scripture today talks about the wayward son who goes away and is reckless in his life and spends things and then is sorry so the lesson today for all of us I think is sometimes we all go astray we all do things wrong and we all make wrong decisions sometimes we don't listen to our parents and sometimes we make wrong decisions and then we realize we did wrong and we feel bad and we're afraid to say something. But what God is telling us that Jesus always welcomes us. Jesus welcomes us back home. If we truly say we are sorry for what we have done, 
God forgives us. Jesus is the one who died for us, cares for us, and assures us that we are forgiven. We can come back home and start anew. This is the joy of the scripture, forgiveness. And when we are forgiven, God rejoices in heaven when we turn back and do the right things. So as you do something wrong, don't be afraid to tell God I'm sorry and then trust that he will forgive you. Amen. Well, years ago we had a neighbor near us who had a big friendly dog who loved to go on his own adventure. Sometimes he ended up outside our fence hoping to play with our dog. He was often in the yard when my husband was working there. Well, the neighbor's dog soon acquired a reputation for running away from home, sending the owner on frantic searches. So one day my husband was working in the yard and he decided to help out. So he opened the fence and let the dog in and tied the dog to a tree, gave it some nice cool water in the shade and called the owner. Our neighbor was so thrilled that her dog was safe and had been found she came to take her pet home. A couple of days later, well, you know what happened. The dog ran away again. You guessed it, he ended up outside our house. So my husband repeated his rescue attempt. She picked up the wayward puppy, but she rejoiced again as her puppy was unharmed. So this story kind of reminds me of the gospel lesson today about the prodigal son and the rejoicing father. Despite the son's intentional departure from the family and how he wondered and spent his money and lived recklessly, the father welcomed him back home with joy, forgiveness, and celebration once the son admitted he had done wrong. It seems the love of the father who lost its son, though, had some reconciling to do with the other son. So I wanted to take a look at the Bible passages that happened before this lesson, because that sometimes gives us a clue on what happened before and the meaning. There are two other parables that Jesus teaches about before this lesson. One is the parable of the lost sheep, where the shepherd searches the wilderness and brings the sheep back home safely, and everyone rejoices. The sheep was lost, but then found. The other is the lost coin, where the woman sweeps her house and diligently looks for that lost coin, and when she finds it, she rejoices. And that say, Jesus says in heaven that the angels and God rejoices when we return back to him. But there is something different about the story of the prodigal son. First, it seems to focus on the family, how divided they are, and even more so when the father shows forgiveness. But the lesson could possibly be, no matter what the cause, this is a family torn apart by selfish desires, jealousy, and resentment. We all experience that in life. But Jesus uses four words in this parable. The son was lost, and then he was found. But then he says something else. The father rejoiced because his son, who was dead, is now alive again. Bible commentator Christopher Edmondson points out something I never thought about before in this passage. The parable says twice, the son who was once dead is now alive. With these words, he says, the parable is a prelude to the resurrection, an Easter story that reaffirms that God's kingdom, there is death-defying love and mercy to call his people back to him. So when Jesus was betrayed by his own disciples, handed over to authorities, beaten, shamed, humiliated, and nailed to a cross to die, all for us through the generations and for you and me, that's God's death-defying love for us. The Bible sums it up this way in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so everyone who believes in him may not perish, but will have everlasting life. But we're a lot like the prodigal son. 
Sometimes we may even think that we're a lot like the puppy. We like to wonder and do things in life and then realize we make mistakes. How do we go back home? How do we find our way? It's then when we realize that God loves each and every one of us, despite the mistakes that we have made. Christ is the master who rescues us and brings us home again. Once we say we're sorry and we want to come home, no matter what we've done, God forgives us through his son, Jesus Christ. The first step is to realize that when we've lost our way, there is hope. We can be found through Jesus. God forgives us for all the wrong things we do each and every day. We start anew. We start fresh. God's gift of grace through our faith makes us right with God. It's then that we realize that Jesus, the Son of God, was crucified on the cross and died for us. Through his glorious death and resurrection, Jesus conquered sin and death, reconciled the world to himself, including you and me. When we're sorry and we ask God for forgiveness, he brings us home. So the master is looking for us today to come home, to come back into the flock as we're forgiven to live in Christ again. The prodigal son is also a lesson of the reminder of Christ's greatest commandment that no matter what happens, we need to love one another as Christ loved us. It's a lesson about mending relationships. It's a message about forgiveness of one another and then celebrating that joy of life. We're a lot like the prodigal son or even the wayward puppy. When we make bad decisions and run after selfish desires, we get into trouble and we lose our way. But we can find our way home. We may even feel bad and don't know how to forgive ourselves. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So when we confess to God that we've done wrong, God forgives us. There's hope. There's celebration in heaven. Jesus brings us back home. So think about possibly this. Are you struggling with a sin or something you have done in life and you can't forgive yourself? Jesus will forgive you and bring you peace and love and rest. He said, come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We can begin anew. We can forgive ourselves and each other. And as Christians, we are called to be Christ-like and to help one another. Jesus will welcome us home. Finally, God says in Isaiah 43, I, yes, I am he. He who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. We may feel lost, but we are found through the death and the living Christ. Our lives are renewed. It's the hope of the resurrection. Easter is about forgiveness and the promise that Christ holds for us. Amen. We'll continue our service with um, the hymn of the day found on page 95.
We will continue now with the Apostles' Creed found on page 65. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may share a warm greeting with your neighbor and share your peace. We have the offering in the back of the church, so we will now continue with the response of the offering. Tory prayer found on page 67. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the way of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, you make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God, Countries are divided and leaders are often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially be with the people of the Ukraine. Act quickly to bring end to wars. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God. Your people cry for help in the times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiences financial, financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who were sick and grieving. Remember those who have lost loved ones in this congregation and friends, and those who are sick, and those we name in our hearts. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and those who help others through the Disaster Lutheran Fund. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God. The one who is dead is alive again. 
We give thanks for those who have died. Confident and steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them, O Lord, in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Accept the prayers that we bring, O Lord, on behalf of the world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that the Lord has taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close with our sending hymn, number 482.